Samsung's Galaxy S3 is one of the most successful Android smartphones ever, with over 40 million units sold. How does the new BlackBerry stack up against the Samsung heavyweight? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is BlackBerry Z10 versus Samsung Galaxy S3. Some caveats real quick. Our Galaxy S3 here is the version for Verizon Wireless, so it's packing a different set of guts than the international version. Also, the Galaxy S series runs Samsung's proprietary TouchWiz skin atop Android, so this comparison only applies to Samsung-built Android devices, most specifically, of course, the Galaxy S3. Now, just like yesterday's Lumia 920 comparison, we're going to compare these devices in terms of hardware, software, ecosystem, and camera. If you missed yesterday's video, avoid missing future ones. Subscribe and follow us in the links in the description down below. Jumping right into hardware, we'll go ahead and get specs out of the way first, so get out your notepads and your calculators. Our American Galaxy S3 here is packing the dual-core Qualcomm S4 running at 1.5 GHz and backed up by 2 gigs of RAM, but most global versions use the quad-core Exynos processor and a single gig of RAM. Those differences aside, the Galaxy S3 comes with either 16, 32, or 64 gigs of onboard storage, expandable up to an additional 64 gigs using microSD expansion. The situation on the Z10 is a little simpler. The version BlackBerry has announced, our unlocked variant here, sports a 1.5 GHz dual-core processor backed up by 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of onboard storage. That's also expandable via microSD up to an additional 64 gigs of storage, and there's LTE on board here as well. With the exception of onboard storage, then, these two units are fairly well-matched, but there are some rather visible differences. To start with, the 2100 milliamp hour pack on the Galaxy S3 is significantly larger than the 1800 milliamp hour battery on the BlackBerry. Fortunately, both are removable for quick swapping. The displays are fundamentally different as well. The Galaxy S3's 4.8-inch Super AMOLED panel dwarfs the BlackBerry's 4.2-inch LCD, and it delivers more saturated colors and deeper blacks. The BlackBerry's screen, though, offers higher pixel density, a higher resolution overall, and depending on your own personal hardware build, it's more manageable with one hand. It's not shielded by Gorilla Glass due to its so-called touch-on-lens display technology, but it is sunk ever so slightly below the bezel. Hopefully, that'll provide some protection against drops. That leads us into build quality, where the difference in design is striking. These are both thin, light smartphones, separated only by a half millimeter in thickness and four grams in weight, but they feel completely different in the hand. The Galaxy S3, with its slick, smooth plastics and wide radius corners, feels and looks like the pebble Samsung intended, but compromises in the design, like this fake brushed metal border, give it a cheap appearance from some angles. The BlackBerry, by contrast, is a study in straight lines, aggressive right angles, and hard, unyielding plastics. The soft touchback cover is stippled and easy to grip. The buttons are machined stainless steel, and this device as a whole feels solid, much more so than its Samsung contemporary. The BlackBerry features the same NFC capability as the S3, and, sadly, the same lack of wireless charging support out of the box, but it does include a dedicated HDMI out port in lieu of requiring an adapter. BlackBerry's new OS is rather unlike anything on the market, and that definitely includes Android 4.1.1 running underneath the TouchWiz Nature UX. By now, we're all familiar with Android's interface paradigm, the app drawer, the notification shade, and most visibly, the multiple home screens full of rearrangeable shortcuts, icons, and widgets. The Android OS is the most customizable major mobile platform on the market. Even right out of the box, you can pretty much arrange your home screens any way you want. That's not the case on BlackBerry 10, which locks you into the new BlackBerry way of doing things. There is the familiar app drawer off to the right, but the home screen is dominated by a collection of currently running apps shown in minimized boxes called Active Frames. These can act like widgets if the developer has built that functionality in, which is cool. If not, they just appear as static snapshots of applications, which is less cool. Apps can be opened or closed right from this view, similar to Android's built-in multitasking ribbon, but the difference with BB10 is that the task manager isn't hidden in a separate area. It's at the heart of the experience. In lieu of Android's notification shade is the BlackBerry Hub, which lives off to the left side of the active frames and aggregates all notifications into a single view. 
Third-party apps like Gtalk also make use of the hub after they're installed, so you have one big unified inbox. It's also true of Android's notification shade, and so is the ability to peek at messages while not leaving the app you're currently in, but the devices do it differently. You swipe down from the top bezel on Android, while you swipe up from the bottom bezel and then to the right for more detail on BB10. The shortcut toggles that Samsung has put into its notification shade aren't in the hub on BlackBerry. Instead, they're available by swiping down from the top on the Z10. That top swipe isn't confined to the home screen either. Executing it in an app usually calls up the app's menu or settings, and swiping left or right serves the function of a back key on the buttonless BlackBerry experience. Swiping up from the bottom always returns you to the home screen, and it also unlocks the device if you don't want to use the power standby key up top. And of course, there's the gesture-based keyboard, which allows you to flick words up into your document right from under your thumb. Sure, you can download any keyboard you want on an Android device, but BlackBerry really developed something special with its text input on the Z10. Overall, the platform's heavily gesture-based interface method takes longer to get used to, but after a while, it feels more fluid than using the Galaxy S3's back and menu keys and big clunky physical home button. Unfortunately, that fluidity comes at a cost in the form of stability. Whenever you have a brand new OS fighting against an entrenched competitor on its fourth major revision, you're going to see a reliability trade-off, and that's the case with BlackBerry 10. A good example is that of the browser, which supports Flash and does okay in the SunSpider JavaScript benchmark at 1680 milliseconds, but which still stutters and drags during page loads more than the Galaxy S3's stock browser. BB10 is still a very young OS, and it still has its share of bugs that Android has had plenty of time to eliminate. We dinged BlackBerry for its app selection relative to Windows Phone in yesterday's review, so you can imagine how this portion of the comparison will go. In short, Android has over 10 times the number of available apps in the Google Play Store as BlackBerry does in its app world, and Google also offers much more multimedia content. The Google Play Store is a mature, thriving market that any new smartphone contender would be hard-pressed to compete with, and of course, BlackBerry is nowhere near it. That said, BlackBerry did come strong out of the gate, announcing relationships with big-name app vendors and managing to woo developers into building or porting over 70,000 apps for the platform at launch. Yeah, many are knockoffs, and there are significant holes. Massive gaps, really. So if you're someone who relies on a solid third-party app ecosystem, it'll be a long time before BB10 catches up with your needs. But BlackBerry has shown that it's not going to settle for a stagnant app and content store, so it is definitely worth keeping an eye on. An ecosystem isn't just about apps, though, and if you're a Google user 9 times out of 10, you're still going to want to stick with an Android product. BlackBerry will interface just fine with your email, calendar, and contacts, but Google has innovated and integrated so much on the Android side with apps like Google Now that you're really missing out on a lot of the Google experience by carrying any other device. Even after months and months on the market, the Galaxy S3 still packs one of the better smartphone cameras out there. It delivers good results with appropriate color balance and contrast, and even does fairly well in low light and other challenging shooting environments, thanks to an elaborate suite of settings and options in the viewfinder software. It does tend to err on the warm side, though. And Samsung's not the only one who knows how to be clever in terms of camera software, as BlackBerry proved when it built in its face detection and time travel element, kind of a mix of Samsung's best photo and best face features. It's still a fairly bare-bones interface, though. And the pictures the Z10 generates are also not that great compared to the SGS3. It tends to err on the cool side, and it's too aggressive with auto exposure and white balance. It loses a lot of detail on textures, and its capture area isn't as wide. In terms of 8-megapixel smartphone shooters, the Z10s isn't bad, per se, but we'd definitely prefer the SGS3's camera at our side if we were going to take a lot of photos. Watch for our BlackBerry Z10 video sample coming soon. While BlackBerry the company is part of the old guard, BlackBerry the smartphone, specifically the Z10, is the new kid on a block full of very seasoned players. If you're okay with that, and the bugs that come along with it, and you favor an excellent unified messaging experience and the corporate security features BlackBerry was built to excel at, the Z10 will suit you fine, while delivering a fresh new user experience to boot. If customization and stability is more your bag, with a rich ecosystem and the tightest Google integration available, 
not to mention a very good camera and a solid software package overall, the Galaxy S3 running Android 4.1 will probably be the better fit. That's going to do it for this one, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, throw us a like here on YouTube. Follow us in the links of the description down below. Stay tuned for our full BlackBerry Z10 review coming in the following days. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.